All right. So give everybody a minute to come in and get everything going here. All right. Like I said, we'll just, uh, hi everybody. Um, we'll just take a few minutes here. Just let everybody kind of, whoever's going to join the live stream can come along and, you know, log on to it and whatever else. Wasn't sure if I was going to get this live stream done today. So I didn't make a really good, um, you know, announcement type of a thing or whatever else. I usually try to give people more notice before I bring it out. Um, but we, we got hit by a pretty good snowstorm over the weekend, a nor'easter, so about 20 inches of snow, they say, fell, but it was hard to tell because it was blowing around so much. We had a lot of drifting and everything else on our property, so a lot of work there. Um, so hopefully everybody's been doing good. you want you can take some time start out at the beginning of the um, live stream here you can just write down you know your area that you're from kind of helps people connect whatever else you can just write down you know us Patton Maine is where we're at right now so it's where the office is so if you want to take some uh, time that you can you know, just write down the basic area where you're from. Oh, good. Praise the Lord. That's, that's so that there. Baby boy was baby boy was born on Friday at home. Thank you for your prayers, brethren in Cincinnati. Praise the Lord. That's great to hear. That's neat. Great. It, it, it is a unique experience that we have, you know. I know the Internet's got its issues, and I've probably said this before, but it's just amazing to think of, you know, that uh, I see people from other countries all over America and then other countries, too. It's pretty neat when you think about it. All right. Sounds good. Okay, I guess we're going to uh, guess we'll get started here. Um, you want to get your King James Bible ready? I'm going to be turning to some different scriptures today. It's not a real in-depth study or anything, but there's two that I'd need to warn about because I was uh, actually had a sister in the Lord ask me years ago about this one diet and at the time I hadn't I didn't hear about it I thought okay what's that and um, and looked into it and everything else and at the time I didn't really know what to say about it but since then doing some study on it it's kind of a yeah not good and then the other one's definitely not good and I'll show a book about that here in a minute but um, you say what are these two diets okay um, the diet number one that I'm going to be kicking is the blood type diet. Hear me out if you're into that type of thing. You eat according to your blood type. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, diet number two is eating raw meat for the enzymes and all the other things. There's some information on that. So let's start out here with the blood type diet. All right, I'm going to actually just read here. I'm not going to put it up on screen. You can go. WebMD actually has a um, whole article on this, and uh, WebMD is definitely a, more of the medical establishment uh, situation there. But type O blood, it says here, a high-protein diet <clears throat> heavy on lean meat, poultry, fish, and vegetables, and light on grains, beans, and dairy. The, Ad, the Adamo, the guy that I guess came up, Peter J. Diamo, 
the Adamo. Also recommends various supplements to help with tummy troubles and other issues, he says, people with type O tend to have. Type A blood is a meat-free meat free diet based on fruits and vegetables, beans and legumes, and whole grains, ideally organic and fresh, because D. Adamo says people with type A blood have a sensitive immune system. Type B blood avoid corn, wheat, buckwheat, lentils, tomatoes, peanuts, and sesame seeds. Chicken is also problematic. Diadamo says he encourages eating green vegetables, eggs, certain meats, and low-fat dairy. Um, and then type AB blood. Uh, foods to focus on include tofu, seafood, dairy, and green vegetables. He says people with type AB blood tend to have low stomach acid, avoid caffeine, alcohol, and smoked or cured meats. Okay. So according to your different four different blood types there, whatever else, uh, there are certain things that you should avoid and not have and whatever else. Well, um, I don't agree. Okay, I very much disagree. And the reason I disagree is because I have a standard. Right, here's my standard. And I don't care. You know, I'm very much into natural health and, and ultimately... I'll talk more about this as we continue. Natural ha health has to be personal. It has to be what works for you. I can't, I have, there is no Brian Denlinger diet and you have to wear a red and black buffalo plaid shirt in order for it to work or something. Okay. Uh, no, you know, that's not there. What works for me might not work for you. Okay. My body type is different. My body size, the area where we live, the, my needs living in the winter, you might have something living in a more tropical climate or whatever else. But there are a few rules in the scriptures that you always have to abide by, right? And there's some common sense things in the scriptures. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 16. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we have four different blood types. And if you eat the wrong food with the wrong blood in your system, it's just going to explode and do some kind of horrible thing. And you'll be in just terrible, bad health. And you just can't do that. That's just terrible. Um, not so. Matthew chapter 16, um, verse 5. It says here, And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. <laughs> you have to love how dumb they were sometimes. Kind of like us, you know. We all say some stupid things. The Lord probably just, uh, <laughs> you can just imagine. Verse 8, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do, not, do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not yet, or that ye do not understand that I speak it not of to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven uh, of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Okay. Now, if here's the point. If people's diets are based on their blood types, then you would have to say that Jesus, the creator of all man, by him all things consist. Without him was not anything made that was made, the Bible teaches. You would have to teach that Jesus gathered together. There we have in verse 9, 5,000 and 4,000 in verse 10. The two different times he fed the multitudes. All 5,000 people had the same blood type. Uh, I don't think so. And then again, you know, he did it again, 4,000 people after that, and they all had the same blood type. They could take the fish and the and the bread. No, no, um, don't fall for that stuff. Okay, um, health is very important. Natural health is very important. But what Jesus was really saying there is the false doctrine that will mess you up worse than eating the wrong kind of foods. And you go to the list of the different things that you should avoid, and uh, you shouldn't have as much of the grains in your diet you shouldn't have as much meat or you should have more vegetables more fruit more this more that avoid cheese avoid dairy avoid brethren you're just going to have to experiment on yourself 
I'll just tell you right now, um, we've been having a, a tough time with going, staying asleep. We'll sleep good from about, oh, 8.30 or so when we go to bed till about 2.30 in the morning. And then just, boom, it's like a light switch gets turned on. We're just awake. And we were having a hard time with that. And not so at first when we were eating a certain thing at night, um, which I'll tell you about here in a minute. Um, but it's just been getting worse and we changed our diet and we're sleeping really, you know, a lot better. You say, what was it that was in your diet? But we're, we were eating sprouted grain bread is what we were eating. Ezekiel bread is the brand. And, um, and at first it was great. Okay. It was, it was a wonderful type of a thing. And, uh, we slept just fine and, and whatever else. But then after a while, it was starting to be, I don't know what this is. And we cut this out of our diet and cut that out of our diet. We'll try putting this in and putting that in. And uh, finally, we just said, you know what? Let's just take a break from the, you know, we would make grilled cheese sandwiches, you know, on our wood stove and a skillet, the cast iron skillet. And then it was, okay, let's just start making meat. And so we have meat, you know, at the end of the day, we eat twice a day, um, basically. Sometimes we'll eat a, a, you know, kind of a lunch type of, of meal. But typically, we eat two different meals a day, right? And in the evening, we've been eating meat, which is uh, we'll, we'll put, a, you know, hamburger, fry up some hamburger with onion and, you know, fresh onion. And we're even incorporating some apple, fresh apples from our property because we have lots of them you know hundreds of pounds of apples to use up before spring so we're eating a lot of apples both raw and cooked and we're sleeping really good and we have cheese we'll have spring water with it um sometimes we'll have raw milk we do get grass-fed raw milk um thankfully there's a farm in our area that that uh, sells it so we're very thankful for that but um this blood type diet thing like I said, I've looked into it and I'm just thinking, okay, I've tried some of this different stuff and, you know, it's, it doesn't work. Okay. And, you know, you'd have to teach that Jesus somehow got, you know, all people of the right blood type. So none of them had allergic reactions or whatever else. And here's one, another big thing about health. And that is, um, we have so many more pollutants in the atmosphere right now than they would have had in the first century. I mean, you think of how pure it would have been back then, just kind of, uh, <laughs> it's a little disheartening, you know, um, you know, the, the lights at night and everything else blocking out the starlight and, and all the electrical frequencies that were just bombarded with all the time, nanotech that's gotten into our systems. I mean, it's insane. Vehicle exhaust driving by, you breathe it in, just the toxicity that we're in under all the time and, and, you know, all the, the, you know, shots that we've gotten in the past and things. So we have a lot of different things about, you know, I mean, we've been exposed to GMO crops. We've been exposed to, there's so much stuff that we have to battle with right now. So to try to say, well, here's the diet and it'll, I'm guaranteeing it will work for everything. No, it won't. You have to experiment with stuff. But those, but when you see a diet and you say, I, I might try this, if it contradicts scripture, then you have to scrap it. Okay. So the blood type diet, no, I'm sorry. I don't believe it. And my main reason for rejecting the blood type diet is simply that, you know, oh, we have uh, Jesus, you know, he would have had to get, you know, 5,000 of the people with the same blood type together. So no. I don't believe that. And the, and the blood type thing is only a recent, you know, quote unquote discovery too. So I would reject that one, but that one's not as bad as the other one. Okay. The other one is eating raw meat. Now, many people might not be aware of the scriptural prohibitions to eating raw meat, specifically the blood in the meat. Um, but this one, this one, there's no excuse on. Okay. The other one you could somewhat make arguments for. Raw meat diet? No. Okay, I'll show you the book here, which I've been uh, reading little bits of it as I can. Uh, and there's he makes some good points. There are some things I would agree with in here. But this guy right here, this... Um, 
I forget how you say it, Ogenus Vanderplants or Vanderplants, planets, something like that. But this guy here, um, you know, the primal diet. Now, he makes some really good points, but let me just read something here, and you can actually see uh, that he kind of leans towards this blood type thing somewhat. Um, this is page 150. He says, there are three basic blood types when determining what meat someone should eat regularly. These types are, number one, people who naturally have acidic blood easily produce red blood cells. They do not naturally produce enough white blood cells. Generally, this type should eat mostly white raw meat, fish, fowl, rabbit to be balanced. If they eat red meat more than occasionally, they will have a tendency to be irritable, impatient, over anxious, and over aggressive. Now, let me just stop there. Okay, there are other, there are also other things that can trigger being irritable, impatient, over anxious, and over aggressive. So, you know, some of that's just subjective. Well, I see this person, they're not eating enough raw fish. So therefore, that's why they're, you know, uh, aggressive and whatever else. Eh, eh. Yeah, be careful with some of that stuff. You can't really prove that. Um, but he goes on and he talks about, you know, people who naturally have alkaline blood easily produce white blood cells. They do not naturally produce enough red blood cells. Generally, this type should eat mostly red, red raw meat, beef, lamb, venison to be balanced. If they eat white meat more than occasionally, they will have a tendency to be lethargic and tired uh, or, or anemic. Um, and number three, people who naturally have a balanced blood pH produce a blood or balance of red and white blood cells. Generally, this type should eat both red and white raw meat to remain balanced. People of this type can do fairly well as vegetarians. Um, what does the Bible say? Scripture must be our final authority. What do the scriptures say? Acts chapter 15 and verse 29. We'll go there first. Because the Bible is very clear on the issue of eating of blood. Um, very clear. Acts chapter 15 verse 29. The Jews, the disciples are there and they're, they're saying, what should we say to the Gentiles when they get saved? When we bring them into the church, what, what should we do? Um, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. Okay, so um, things strangled. It's an animal that's been strangled. The blood's not being let out of that animal. You're supposed to get the blood out of them. And um, I you know, have butchered you know, quite a, a bit of a, a wild game. And a lot of times, if it's a smaller wild animal, what you do is you just, you know, take the the carcass of it, the meat, and you put it into some water with some salt, and the salt will draw the blood out. Um, I don't want to eat blood. And, of course, obviously, if you're eating it raw, it's going to have the blood in it yet. All right. So that's Acts chapter 15, verse 29. You say, well, that's to a Christian in the New Testament. Well, let me show you some other things. Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus chapter 17, it's not just the New Testament, um, Leviticus 17 verse 14, giving some prohibitions to the Jews under the law, back in the Old Testament, it says here, for it is the light, for it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof, therefore I said unto the children of Israel, ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. Okay. They're kicked out of the nation. They were probably even dead back then under the law. Genesis chapter 9. Go back to the book of Genesis, the first book of your King James Bible. Genesis chapter 9. Verse 4. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Okay? It's talking about when the flesh has blood in it, when it's raw. You don't eat it. So what do we have? Genesis, before the law. Leviticus, under the law. Acts, after the law. There's no excuse. Okay? That's basically three of the major dispensations there. Um, you can't justify the thing of eating raw meat. 
Uh, well, there, but brother, there's new research. We found new research. If it contradicts the scriptures, then it's false. Beware of oppositions of science falsely so called, the Bible says. So I would call that false science. And I'm not going to eat raw meat, and I suggest you don't either because there's a spiritual connotation to it. Um, not good. John chapter, give you another verse here. John chapter 21. You say, well, don't you want to just experiment with it just to see what happens? No, I don't. John chapter 21, verse 9. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus is there cooking fish over an open fire. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three, and for all there was were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine, and none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. They ate the fish that was cooked. Okay. They didn't mess around with raw fish. Jesus didn't invite them to a sushi bar. Right. <laughs> Let me get, make some sushi for you. No, he cooked it. Well, brother, uh, we have uh, sushi as part of our culture. We're Japanese or something. Um, if you're saved, then you need to go with the scriptures. And the scriptures say, don't eat the blood, right? Don't eat raw meat. Um, you say, well, I'm, I'm a Germanic. We eat uh, blood sausage. Don't do that. If it's not cooked, you have no business eating it. Uh, well, we have pate. We grind up, you know, uh, raw liver and whatever else. And we put it on a, don't eat it. Don't eat it. It has to be cooked, right? Um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. And I've been over this one very many times, but very important with, in light of everything that's going on in our world right now. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. I'm not commanding to abstain from meats. I'm commanding to abstain from raw meat. Okay. Don't mess with that because it has the blood in it. Anybody comes out, pastor or whoever else, and they say, um, you know, this, I've been trying this raw meat diet thing and it's wonderful. I'm really feeling good. Uh, no, no, don't eat blood. Plain and simple. Abstain from things that are strangled. They they need to be properly slaughtered and get the blood out of the meat before you eat it. I don't care what some guy says and his personal experiences and whatever else. It doesn't matter to me. I am not going to wear or I'm not going to uh, eat raw meat. Simple as that. As far as eating meat, yes, I do eat meat. I eat a lot of meat, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And you say, what kinds of meat do you eat? Then was it clean or unclean animals? Well, let's look what the Bible says. Verse four. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. The New Testament is written for Christians. It's not written for Jews. Okay. Jews have a very specific diet. And quite frankly, I believe that there are certain things that Jews abstain from and that's good for them. God made it specifically for them as a people. They're more of a Mediterranean people. They're not a northern people. Um, Jews can get by with olive oil. Use it in cooking. Use it on the food, whatever else. I've had olive oil, you know, really good stuff. And it just doesn't really do much for me. Um, coconut oil. I use coconut oil, oil to brush my teeth. But uh, other than that, I don't really, you know, there's some things I, you know, put it in the superfood fudge that, I made the you know I had a video here on YouTube about that. Okay, fine, but uh, animal fat makes me feel a lot better, especially raw uh, butter. I like raw butter. I uh, like to cut a piece of it off. I was like that as a boy. Ironically, I you know, I remember we had this family get together the one time, and and um, my mother had this nice you know <laughs> plate of the butter on there, and she had it looking really nice. 
and I went up as a little boy and I, I literally took, you know, I, my hand, you know, just got a handful of butter. You know, I snuck up when everybody was downstairs socializing and, uh, and I took a big scoop out. I was eating it. I got a little trouble for that, but I've always had a thing for butter. I always liked that animal fat and, um, moving up North here from Pennsylvania to Northern Maine. Uh, I understand the, um, the importance of animal fats and a lot of meat in my diet, because if I don't eat a lot of meat and a lot of animal fat, it just, my body just does not function well. And I get really cold and everything else. If I eat a lot of meat. Um, I just, I feel a lot more energetic. I feel a lot warmer when I'm outside and you'll see that you can study that with any Northern type of people. Um, higher meat diet is a good thing, but avoid the raw stuff. Okay. That's clearly condemned in scripture, right? Um, as far as pork is concerned, um, my ancestry is German. So pork, I feel fine on pork. And again, another thing that you'll get into is the thing of, but brother, I can show you studies where pork is bad. I've gotten that from people. Yes. And I can show you studies where vegetables are bad and fruits bad because it's GMO and it's raised in big, you know, big farms and whatever else. I know I actually used to work with a black guy many years ago and he would work on plantations. He was from Georgia. He'd work in plantations where, where Mexican, you know, illegals were being brought in. And he said they would go to the bathroom right among the crops that they were harvesting for the American market. And he said, I won't touch the crops, you know, and whatever. <laughs> There's so many arguments that you can make. The point is you can make arguments against pork or milk or a whole bunch of things and use what science has proved from the big commercial ag type of stuff. And you can do the same thing with anything. But when it comes to, you know, grass fed meat, grass fed raw milk, um, things like that, uh, try it out. Um, it might not be right for your particular ethnicity. Uh, again, I believe good health in terms of biblical, true biblical health is what area are you living in? If I lived in the tropics, I would not need to eat a lot of meat, plain and simple. And I would be pretty miserable because I can't take a lot of heat uh, living in a hot environment. And I have been in, you know, I was in Costa Rica twice and Honduras once, by the way. So I am familiar with tropical areas and been in Florida and things too. So, um, but where I live, where you live, will determine some of your diet. Also, also your ethnicity. What is kind of uh, the traditional foods of your people? Um, Weston A. Price, the Weston A. Price Foundation. I actually have another book here. Um, heard about this and I wanted to get this. Um, but the Thomas S. Cowan, MD, and Sally Fallon Morell, um, The Truth About Contagion. Looks like a really good book. I've skimmed through it a little bit. Looks like a good one. Can't wait to read this, but they are from the Weston A. Price Foundation. Weston A. Price um, was, a, was a dentist, um, I think in the late 1800s, early 1900s, somewhere in there. And he traveled the world studying people, isolated peoples, and he saw they had perfect teeth. And many times they're not even brushing their teeth. And why? Because they weren't eating the processed foods of the Western world. And um, literally just watched a thing yesterday, by the way where uh, they were talking about these guys over in Myanmar um, going down into the, the one volcano and harvesting sulfur. They had these tubes coming out of the, the side of the, you know, inside of the crater of the volcano, and they're harvesting sulfur as it's dripping out, and then it solidifies when it hits the air and everything else. And uh, it cracked me up because they're, they said that they actually had to slow down their production because they had to do social distancing. <laughs> I'm thinking... You're in a crater of a volcano. There's sulfur, toxic smoke going everywhere, and you have to do social distancing. Okay, yeah, but uh, just crazy. But they actually talked about later on in the video, they talked about how that sulfur is used. One of the, the things sulfur is used for is to make, is to bleach sugar. Sugar, true sugar, is brown. Um, again, I saw it when I was in Costa Rica the one time out in, um, there was a Camp La Hondura 
out in the jungles that these you know people had down there and we went out to pour concrete floor in this gymnasium for the children out in the area and uh, they were doing you know they had the sugar cane and they were you know squeezing it and stuff getting the juice out of it and then they were boiling off the liquid and they were making these blocks like little bricks of pure sugar and it was brown and but see that doesn't look attractive so they want the white sugar and the way that they make the sugar white is by bleaching it with sulfur and the interesting thing is this video i saw um on youtube yesterday as we were doing some research and uh, this video actually said that the best sulfur actually comes as a byproduct from the uh, gas and oil refineries. I thought, what? So, you know, byproduct from, it's a basically industrial waste, and they use it to bleach the sugar and make it white. It's And by the way, if you don't know, the liquid form of sulfur is sulfuric acid. It's in batteries and used to make your sugar white. <laughs> Not good. And it's in pharmaceuticals, by the way, as well. It's one of the bigger ingredients in pharmaceuticals, sulfuric acid. So, oh, man. Um, but, you know, there's so much good information out there when it comes to your health. Try things. Experiment on yourself. You know, that's the neatest thing because you can't go wrong when, you know, you eat good nutritional stuff. And there's th sometimes you'll try something and you'll say, wow. I really feel good on that. And you eat it again. And and I really, I'd like to do a video on this sometime. My theory of health, natural health. I believe your body, if you could draw it out, would be like a bunch of little, little tubes or little vials or something like that. And one says magnesium, one says, you know, potassium, one says sodium, one says calcium, whatever. And as your body, as you're eating foods, your body will need to fill up those little vials and as you're going through your normal day and you get say toxicity that enters your body or whatever else it'll deplete some of that so you'll get low in potassium you'll start to feel certain ways you low in magnesium low in this low in that you keep eating those foods that really make you feel really good and the interesting thing is i believe when your little vial is full your body can actually start to regenerate certain things and again, Weston A. Price, he said that you can actually regenerate teeth if your diet is really good. And I heard uh, Josh Axe said the same thing in one of his videos. So there's some amazing things about how God created our bodies. And um, I would never, ever limit somebody's diet to veganism. Okay. I would never say you have to be a vegan. There, you know, I'm going to be a vegan now or hardcore. That might work for some people, okay? And again, I'm not going to slam somebody because they're into um, vegetarianism. They, uh, you know, Romans chapter 14 gives that as a thing. Somebody who's weak eats herbs. Fine. That might work for your culture. Maybe you're, uh, you know, like these guys in Myanmar. They're little, fairly short guys, you know, weighed just over 100 pounds and things. Hey, a lot of vegetables in their diet might work pretty good for them. They might not need a lot of meat. Uh, me, I'm six foot three, 230 pounds. Uh, I can't live on vegetables. Okay. Um, and, you know, and there are times when I will have a literal vegetarian meal, no meat. So, you know, there are certain times if I'm doing certain things, well, I don't need a whole lot of meat and whatever else. It's all about experimenting. That's the beautiful thing. The Lord gives you all that freedom out there and says, here, try this, try that. I have to wonder, sometimes we talk about what is the marriage supper of the Lamb going to be like? You know, what's the Lord going to do? What's what's he going to, you know, uh, make for us, you know, when we go there? And that, that feast that we'll have as born-again believers. I mean, they just I, th I think about that. That's the kind of stuff that really gets me excited. just gives me chills when I think about what is the Lord going to make? Hmm. Interesting. I don't think he's going to go around and say, okay, I need to know everybody's blood type. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it won't be raw meat. Um, and yeah, there's so many scriptures we could go over too. You know, go back into the Old Testament, and they're, you know, they're sacrificing, you know, the animals and things, and they're supposed to burn it in the fire before they can eat it and whatever else. So, um, uh, 
so that's going to be it. Just wanted to bring that out because I've been hearing different people kind of uh, recommend some of this stuff. And, uh, you know, oh, you should, you know, try to eat your meat raw and everything. No. Um, and the blood type thing. Well, you shouldn't eat this because you have this type of blood. Uh, uh, try different things. Certainly. Absolutely. Um, you know, I love raw milk. Uh, I was raised on raw milk. A lot of motorcycle accidents, never broke a bone. Um, I lived pretty rough as a teenager <laughs> and into my early 20s. But uh, if I drink too much raw milk, it starts to affect me. I can't drink it too much. So all things in moderation, remember that. Um, you know, and I think another thing is it's a kind of a deep, profound type of a thought. Not only should you be eating geographically in terms of what is in your local area, what grows in your local area. I think that's important, especially when you get into raw honey. Raw honey, the bees are pollinating flowers in your area. So a good way to get rid of seasonal, aller seasonal allergies is to have a lot of raw honey from your local area. And I've done that, too. And that works very well. Um, but, you know, um, another thing is seasonal foods okay um there's not a whole lot of fresh berries right now with uh, you know a couple feet of snow on the ground here all right um summertime comes around we eat raw berries you know every day absolutely just eating raw berries like crazy um so um well i guess that's going to be it i don't know if anybody has any comments they'd like to make or whatever i've been seeing the comment section going crazy and i thought i just wanted to get this um out there but uh you know some really amazing things that god has made you know, when the bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made that's the truth let me tell you um it's really neat um to get into raw milk or uh, raw milk, yeah. uh, natural health, excuse me. Um, I do like raw milk there too, so. Um, so, okay, I'm looking at the one question here. Um, is there a difference between raw meat and blood? Is there raw meat without blood? Um, I'd be careful about that um, because, you know, I'll say it this way, okay? A good way to answer that question. I understand what you're saying. You know, you could certainly bleed out an animal and hang him upside down and all that stuff. Um, what I do with wild game, again, I put the meat the carcass into a bowl with water and salt, and it pulls all the blood out. Um, and you can say, well, then you can eat it because it doesn't have any blood in it. Well, in order for you to be able to do that, I would say you really need to find some scripture where anybody ate meat raw. Okay. I just, did, I avoid the thing of eating raw meat. That's the best thing to do. Um, so. Like I said, I, I missed a lot of the comments there. So. But the. Uh, Okay, here, where did it go? There. Thoughts on the Mediterranean diet. I have no idea what that is, sister. I, I really don't know what that is. Um, what do I think about blood transfusions? Um, I don't have a problem with that because you're not eating it. I mean, if you were in an accident, you lose a lot of blood and somebody gives you, you know, blood into yours or whatever. Okay, don't have a problem with that. Um, Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.17, is it a sin to eat low-grade processed food, junk food, etc.? Wouldn't that defile the temple of God? I try to eat organic, organic as much as I can. I gave up junk food a while back. Yeah, you are you are defiling the body. You know, speaking from a lot of experience, you know, white sugar in your diet is real bad for your body. It's not good. And, and the organic thing, um, 
you know, that's even an issue there because there's a lot of organic farms that are, you know, certified organic and everything else. And they're using pesticides and fertilizer and all kinds of toxic stuff. So ultimately it's best to grow your own and raise your own and everything else. But very few of us can raise all of our own food, including me. So you just, that's why you pray over your food. Every time you go to put something in your mouth, pray for it. Very important, especially today. Um, question, what diet would you recommend for a little child? Can you tell from what age Oliver ate everything you uh, eat? Um, well, Oliver, at first we weren't giving him any kind of... Um, um, like citrus fruits. We tried the one time he started getting a rash uh, when he was just really little. Um, he started eating solids fairly early because by the time he was one year old, he had uh, eight teeth, four up top, four down below. And so he, he transitioned over to regular food pretty quickly. But there were times we would see that, okay, he's getting some rash or he's not, you know, he's acting a little funny after we eat this. And it was all natural stuff. So not like he'd be it would kill him or anything, but just, you know, you have to experiment with that. Uh, okay. Pure organic. Uh, what about organic pure cane sugar? The one I buy is white. I don't know a lot of the details when it comes to sugar. Sugar is not white. Okay. It's, it's not, it just simply isn't It's very much like a, uh, maple syrup, maple sugar, uh, it doesn't come out of the tree white, okay? In order for it to become white, they have to do something to it. Um, what do you think of pescatarianism and the Okinawa diet, but no seafood that can be toxic, something like vegetarian, vegetarianism plus fish? Uh, will this diet be healthy and scriptural? Um, never heard of a lot of that, but again, it's going to depend on who you are where you're from and and your ancestry and everything else um i heard a story the one time of some people in vermont actually uh down south of us that um they were white and they adopted a child from africa a little african boy and they were giving him all the you know typical new england foods and whatever you know a lot of meat and ice cream and dairy and all this stuff and the little boy was just getting sick all the time and the doctor said, you know, what are you feeding him? And they told him, he said, no, no, you know, give him the foods that his people would eat over there, that the African people eat. Um, they have some really amazing foods over there in Africa, and they work really well for the African people. Well, praise the Lord. And they did that, and, and the boy got better, and his health issues, you know, cleared up. Um, so um, you just have to experiment with things. So, all right, well, okay, I'll, I'll check into the Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet. Um, again, like I said, you know, and see, here's the other thing. Okay, you go on a some kind of a evangelistic trip. I don't like to use the term missionary because missionary is not in the King James Bible. It's more of a Catholic term. But you go to some kind of a trip overseas or whatever else, and they set something before you. Um, you can't say, you know, I'm here. I insist that you give me, you know, bacon and eggs and, you know, steak and, you know, whatever else. No, whatever set before you, you can eat it as long as it's not sacrificed to an idol. And you can look into that thing and you can say, oh, actually, that was really good. Um, would I eat it all the time? No. You know, um, when I was in Honduras, uh, there was a, we were staying down there with the people in La Acequia, a little town. Uh, San Pedro Sula is the capital of Honduras, if I remember correctly. And uh, La Acequia was, you know, pretty good distance away you know ride on the bus to La Sequia and we were staying there and they actually had grass-fed beef that the family had raised you know on their farm and 
it's kind of funny because I was laughing saying, you know, they actually eat better than a lot of Americans. And they were, you know, making orange juice from the trees in their backyard and uh, really tasted good. But, you know, me drinking the water down there, not a good idea. But um, they would make, you know, the tortillas and the enchiladas and things like that. And it tasted really good to me. But it was not good in terms of having to go to the bathroom, you know, a little while after that. So doesn't work for me, but I was very thankful for it. And thank you very much. It was very good. It tasted great, but it just my body went, mm -mm, no, this doesn't work. Um, so that's what I'm trying to say with a study. If you have something in your diet, in your culture that you're eating and it's not condemned in the scriptures, um, praise the Lord, eat it. Uh, wonderful. If it really helps you feel good and, and whatever else, great. But if it's something that's the Bible's condemning and saying, nah, you kind of, you know, don't eat the blood and, and whatever else, well, then you do well, stay away from it. So, so let me put this one up here. Don't eat food that God told us not to eat. Um, different types of things in the Old Testament. Um, I can't really put your comment up there on YouTube, but, uh, you know, okay, I did come up. I'm doing it on uh, whatever this is, was a stream yard thing. Um, but, you know, that's for the Jews. Okay, if your culture can eat lobster, you know, I'm a New Englander now, and, you know, there's a lot of people like lobster here in the area. It doesn't bother me. So, um, uh, okay, hold on, I'll have to do the other one then. Brother Brian will uh, be continuing with live streams. I really enjoy them. Yes, I will. I will definitely be continuing the live streams. It works out really well for me. Um, Lori Heisen here. I had the flu yesterday. Has any suggestions for getting better? I have been taking zinc and vitamin C and eating homemade chicken noodle soup. Garbanzo bean noodles. Well, that's you're doing well. Just keep at it there. Um, so, uh, camu camu powder is really high in vitamin C. Um, pine needles, pine needle tea. If you have any white pine trees in your around where you're at or whatever else, you can go get some good clean pine needles and make a tea out of them. Just get some hot water, not rolling boil or anything like that, and put the pine needles in there. And um, that's really good for uh, the flu. I've done that before. So, so okay. I'll just say this quick uh, question. What steps for recovery would you take if you caught the infamous uh, COVID? Um, it doesn't exist. Okay. Um, you can go to my website. I have a whole video on it, on that subject. And uh, people need to watch that. I'm not allowed to say anything here on GooneyTube because then I'll get, you know, the video striked and all this other stuff and I'll get attacked for medical misinformation. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I've done the, the work on it. You know, I certainly would tell you that, you know, the thing, it's not passed through Cook's four postulates. Let me just say it that way. Okay. So there you go. Take it or leave it. Um, just be careful what you believe. All right. Out there. So, um, well, that's going to be it. I'll probably be doing another live stream or two this week. Um, this seems to be working very well. One o'clock seems like it's a, a pretty good time for people and whatever else it seems. Um, so I'll probably continue to do that uh, if that works for people. Um, I can't do them late at night because we're, we leave here. This is just our office. We don't live here. And so I can't, you know, we go home and things in the evening. So um, anyhow. Uh, all right. Okay. One other one. I did not address this, so I will answer your question. Do you take vitamins, brother Brian? No, I do not. Um, I do not. I'm purely into nutritional health. Um, so 
Um, my vitamins and minerals come from uh, the food that I eat. Let food be your medicine is kind of the thing I have adopted, and it works quite well. So, all right. Thank you to everybody out there for your prayers, and um, please do continue to pray for us. And uh, we will see you in the next live stream. Okay? So, stay in the word. Remember your standard, brethren, right there. Your standard, King James Bible. See you in the next live stream.